Hi there everybody, this is Will Jones from Stone Circle Games, and today we're going to be giving you a review of Seven Wonders. Let's get into it! Seven Wonders is a card game from designer Antoine Bauza. Bauza? Boza? Ba... Booz... Bauza. We'll go with Bauza. In this game, each player takes on the role of a leader of an actual ancient city, each centered around one of the classic Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. You start with a blank city, and your goal is to create the best civilization that you can, as notated by victory points that you accumulate at the end of the game. There are a lot of different ways to accomplish this, from simple things like building aqueducts and senates, all the way on up to more complicated things like establishing trade routes or developing the science of your civilization. The gameplay is actually very simple to understand. One turn is one card, which is one building. It's as simple as that. The game progresses through three ages, each representing sort of a vague period in history. In each age, the cards get more valuable and more powerful, but also more expensive. So you need to make sure that in addition to building victory points throughout the game, you're also developing resources, mining, and trading so that you aren't left behind when those big expensive cards come up later in the game. In addition to simply constructing buildings, each city has its titular wonder laid out and ready to go that you'll want to build throughout the game as well that give you special benefits that no one else can have. For instance, if you're playing Giza, you'll have pyramids to build, sort of like these back here. Actually, those are, those are the pyramids. Those are the ones. Uh, this is the exact same pyramids. You can build those, those pyramids right there. Now, one of the key elements of gameplay in Seven Wonders is also one of the things that makes it very interesting, because it has a turn flow that's different from most games, and that is, players don't alternate taking turns. Every single card played is played simultaneously, one per player, all revealed at the same time, and played at the same time. Another really unique thing about the gameplay here is that your hand isn't really your hand, at least not for long. After every card that's played, every player will pass their hand of cards either to the left or to the right, depending on the age. The net result of this, the simultaneous play, the shifting card hands, is a surprisingly active and dynamic feeling game. That's one of the major upsides of this game. You never have to wait for another player's really long turn because it's also your turn at the same time. You've always got something to do. This is a lesson in game design that a lot of other companies could really take to heart. The theme of the game is actually pretty fun, especially if you're a history nerd, but that's not really necessary. You really get a sense of how each of these ancient cities are different from each other. It makes sense that the Lighthouse of Alexandria has effects that duplicate trading ports, and it makes sense that the Colossus of Rhodes gives you military power. It's simple, but effective. The game does have a randomness factor, but it's pretty low, all things considered. It basically just depends on what cards are dealt out in what hands at the beginning of each age. But really, that amount of randomness is very manageable, especially in a game where the strategies are as subtle as they are in Seven Wonders. The synergies between cards are such that there's very little direct counterplay against other players, and there's very few things that are just point-and-click good options. You really have to be planning things out and adapting on the fly every single turn. Means that there's a high complexity factor for really advanced play, but the barrier of entry is low enough that even casual gamers should be able to get into it. They're going to lose pretty consistently to players who understand the more advanced strategies, but the fun factor is still very much present. The production value is quite good, I dare say a little better than it had to be. Because of the way that you arrange cards underneath your city board, you don't end up seeing the art very much, except for the actual city board itself. Fortunately, that seems to be where they put most of their art energy. They're all unique looking and pleasant to have in front of you the entire time. The entire game is based on symbols rather than words, which makes things really great for those players who hate to actually read any card text whatsoever. The symbols are blessedly very consistent, so once you figure out exactly how they like to display things, you're able to pick up on new card meanings very quickly. So there's a lot to love about Seven Wonders, but it's not perfect. There are a couple little hitches. For instance, that simultaneous play mechanic that makes things really active, it's always your turn, it's never not your turn, has a dark side to it, in that if there's one person around the table who's really slow, they're slowing down every single turn, not just theirs. You can't sort of isolate their problem. The game balance is actually very good, but there are a couple of missteps. Not all the wonders are quite at the same power level. 
some cards seem too powerful for their cost, things like that. It's very minor, but there are a couple little frustrations in there that you'll get to. The biggest weakness of Seven Wonders is sort of a strange one, in that it doesn't quite function with only two players. You need more than that. They have a mechanic whereby you can play with two players by creating sort of an AI city, but it's pretty unsatisfying and clunky. That, however, can turn into kind of an advantage in that while the game doesn't function very well with very few players, it functions very well with a lot of players. Where most games these days top out at four, maybe five players, Seven Wonders can play fully with seven players controlling all seven wonders. And it's actually really fun and works really well that way. Replayability can get to be a little bit of a problem. There's a lot of depth in Seven Wonders, but most cards are seen in every game, which means that after a little while, you're not seeing anything new ever. Fortunately, the game is very expandable, and there are several expansions already on the market that add a great deal of replayability through card depth and adding a little bit of randomness in what cards are actually in each game. So as soon as you find yourself getting bored with the base set, pick up an expansion and you've got a whole new world in front of you. At the end of the day, Seven Wonders has won a whole slew of design awards, and it deserves every single one of them. It's one of the strongest, most overall fun games I've ever played, and it's really an absolute staple for any true gamer's shelf. So that's the end of it. From all of us here at Stone Circle Games, we hope you've enjoyed this review of Antoine Bowser's Seven Wonders. Be sure to like and subscribe to us below for more great videos. And until then, have fun around the table.